Awesome. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Stephanie, like you heard. And today I'm going to be talking about um, design ethics and specifically thinking about not just diversity in general, but really about being inclusive in your design process. And I'm kind of probably preaching to the choir a little bit, but um, you know, basically I'm arguing that this is important, that it's important enough to really be considered an ethical issue considering the impact of the designs that we're making um, and, the, and the things that we're working on that are not just you know, popular. They're really becoming necessities in people's lives. And so we need to think about who we're including and who we're excluding when we're actually designing these products. So I say designers, but really that includes anyone who's a part of the design process, which is basically everyone who's working on the product. You have your, your impact on what's going to get made. So um, just clarifying that. Um, so a little bit about me, just to give a little bit of context to what I'm talking about. Um, I'm a UX designer and researcher, so I'm talking to users and talking with the people that I work with. And before that, I was working in research for social policy and psychology for a good number of years. So I kind of brought my understanding of research ethics and how you ethically are collecting information from people and disseminating that information to thinking about design ethics, since the impact is, you know, in many ways a lot larger in terms of day to day compared to you know, a research study that gets published and 10 people read. So, um, so when we're talking about design ethics, we're usually talking about, um, we're talking about trying to design in ways that aren't harming people. We're trying to design things that are not, you know, Try not to design tools that are actively oppressing people. We're also talking about, say, like dark patterns where we're not trying not to like trick people or try to deceive people as they're interacting with our interfaces. Um, and that's all great. We should all be aiming for doing no harm with what we're doing. Kind of take a sort of designer's Hippocratic oath um, to try not to harm the people, intentional and unintentional. You can't determine your users, but you can at least try to add some sort of benefit to their lives, um, or at least be neutral, if that's possible. Um, but that's a focus on kind of end results. And kind of what this talk is about is really thinking about process, and not kind of like a process paradigm of like, you know, first you start with ideation and then you go here and there, but really actually thinking about that day to day you're sitting down in front of your computer, in front of a notebook, you're going and talking to another designer or a developer. Um, it's really thinking about the nitty gritty process and thinking about the people that are involved in that process. Design doesn't happen in a vacuum. And ultimately, you, it's a dialogue that you're having kind of internally. If you think about the people that you're working with, the stakeholders that you have, clients that you're working with, and then also externally, you know, thinking about your intended and unintended users. Okay. So why this is important, um, really the simplest way to put it is that people are using the things that we help make. They have that impact, like I said before, it's not just making things that are popular that have a wide impact, but things that are becoming necessities in people's lives. I always think about, you know, if the people that originally were making and designing Microsoft Word thought about the fact that people were going to be tested on how to use it in order to get jobs, you know, however many years later. Things like that happen. You can't predict it, but at the very least, we need to start thinking about these things. Um, and we need to start thinking about the people that are included and excluded in that, because the impact is that if you're, if you're not taking it in mind, especially with tech having the diversity issues that it does have, then you end up promoting just this one dominant worldview, this one dominant perspective, and not considering how other people are impacted, then you, you're, margin, you're further marginalizing marginalized people, you're further excluding them, and you can't say you're doing no harm in doing that. You can't only do no harm for one group of people. So how do we start at least thinking about that? Um, first, you just think about whether your design process is inclusive. And it's not just, you know, not just who, what users are talking to or like if you're researching your designs or testing out your product before you put it out. It's really thinking about the diversity on your team and who's included and excluded about your stakeholders 
um, about research participants if you do research, and then also about your users. So, I mean, between the time I made this slide and today, there have been so many new articles written on different controversies. Racism in AI is becoming something that people are talking more about. Um, Google's anti-bullying AI that basically just isn't working. Um, all of those things involve teams, they involve people, they involve stakeholders who are signing off on everything. And I think the viewpoint that I saw that really put it best is that you have this homogeneous group of people, this lack of diversity, them producing something that just further perpetuates that worldview and really isn't accounting for the fact that, you know, here are all these people who are not in this kind of like white male, cishet, able-bodied kind of like group who are looking at it and like, how could you not see this as a problem? How can you see this is not working? So you want to be thinking about who you're interacting with through this whole process and actually account for it in some kind of way. Um, and that's not to say that you can control who you're working with unless you have like hiring ability, but it's really about taking note of it and then thinking about what am I going to do? What steps am I going to take to make this process more inclusive, to make sure that I'm getting more perspectives and viewpoints outside of just one viewpoint? So the first part of that, and this is really kind of really drawing off of diversity work in general, but really want to be thinking about active inclusion. You can't just note, hey, there's, you know, I work in this very non-diverse environment and I'll just kind of account for it somehow. No, you have to be active in how you're going to include other people and their viewpoints and perspectives. So first off at that is make sure people feel comfortable doing it. If you're making a design and there might be an issue with it, there might be something that makes people from different racial groups feel uncomfortable, they also have to feel comfortable talking to you about that because those sorts of conversations come with consequences for people in marginalized groups. And so you need to first make sure that people can actually feel like they can come to you and talk to you about these things. You need to actually, and a part of that is also listening to them. Don't just listen and then not do anything about it. I, we don't have enough time I could tell many stories about how that happens. Um, how I've gone out of my way to get people from, from, different, um, from different marginalized groups to talk and give feedback on a product to a team and then they just don't do anything with it. You also need to advocate for them. You know, it's not only about listening, but it's also about making sure if you're gonna be the voice of the user, you're the voice of all users, that you're not just advocating for one particular viewpoint that kind of fits with what you understand, but really thinking about here are all these different viewpoints and perspectives coming from different people who aren't like me. I still need to advocate for all of them. And then also reaching out. You can't just hope that people will passively come to you. You need to actually go to them, talk to them, and say, I'm going to, if you're going to place importance on people's viewpoints, you need to take that first step. Okay. And, and it should happen all throughout the process. It can't just happen at the end, once you put it out into the world, and then everyone's tweeting a million tweets about, how could you not see this as a problem? It needs to happen before then. When these products come out, like, what was it, Google's AI for photos that was categorizing black people as gorillas. That's not good, that's harmful, that hurts people. You can't design something and say, hey, I wanna save the world and do no harm and then put out something like that and that's when you find out there's a problem. There wasn't one black person that tested this or looked at it at all. That's not good. It can't just be that. It needs to be the whole way through when you're talking with everyone because that particular kerfluffle, people signed off on that. That didn't just sneakily go out. A whole bunch of people looked at it and worked on it and said, this is okay. So talk to your coworkers, you're talking to users, you're thinking about, okay, if I'm not seeing the inclusivity that I need as I'm going through this process, I need to do something about it. I need to make sure that I'm reaching out to the right groups of people, whether it's other coworkers in other departments, whether it's you know just making sure that wherever you're actually doing your research and bringing people in, it's accessible for everyone to get there, that you're not just, you know, say if you're in a segregated town, only doing your research on one side of town, only getting one group of people to, to actually give you feedback. All those sorts of little things. You have to think about, about that inclusivity the whole way through. And also think about that in terms of impact and how it can impact them in ways you might not understand. And that might require doing some research outside of just talking to people. It might mean looking in, you know, the research that's been done in psychology and sociology and ethnography and really trying to fully understand like how your product is going to be a tool that's in a larger context for a large group of people. 
So of course, none of this is easy. <laughs> I'm not going to say that any of it is easy. I've been in these situations before. It's extremely challenging. You know, as a black woman, it's, it's, you know, you see things happening, you try to speak up, but you also know there are consequences for speaking up. And so I'm not going to assume that it's just something you just flip a switch and do. Because tech has a diversity problem. And it's overwhelmingly white and male. And in turn, you can, the connection between that and some of the controversies that we're seeing, especially with, a, with you know, kind of like these built-in inequalities in AI, are not divorced from one another. They are connected. And so that also means that this is a part of a larger problem of systemic inequality and marginalized groups having to deal with those systemic inequalities. And so kind of like how I said earlier, if you're saying you're gonna do no harm as a designer, you're gonna save the world, you're gonna make these products that are helping people, you can't then make a product that then just further marginalizes people. When we're talking about systemic inequalities, those are the sorts of things we're talking about. Like you have institutional ones where you're talking about government, and then the structural ones are those sort of little details where you see who gets defined as people and who doesn't, and who gets to be included and who gets excluded. So that's where this argument's coming from, is to not bake in systemic inequality into your design work, and that basically you're kind of the front line of trying to counter that work inside of an organization. Because if you're expected to kind of be the voice of the user, you really have to think about what that responsibility means. And if you're trying to do no harm and really think about the impact of your work, Again, that's a responsibility that you have for all people, not just who's being defined as people within, a, um, within an oppressive society. So I'm basically arguing that being inclusive in your design process isn't just like a nice to have, like, oh, okay, I'll try and make sure that I get like a diverse user research sample, you know, sometime. I was saying it's a baseline. Like it's something you need to be thinking about. Now this talk didn't get into like the little details of like here's the exact thing that you do when you're first like starting out with like say a brainstorming exercise. Because everyone's process is different, everyone's teams are different, their resources, kind of what they have on the line for even speaking up about this are different. But I just wanna plant that seed to say, hey, this is important and we need to start thinking about it like as a design community and as a tech community to say, how are we gonna start accounting for the ethical impact of our work and thinking about how diversity, the diversity problem in tech and how being inclusive needs to be a part of that conversation. So in turn, I think designers have to really be at the forefront of saying, I need to be accounting for these things. I need to be accounting for these possible biases and inequalities in, our, in the things that we design like ahead of time, as soon as possible, so that we're actually you know, starting to take an ethical stand and not further perpetuate this kind of division where we're not thinking about who we're excluding and who we're not helping. So all that to say, um, I'm gonna recognize the implications of how you work and how you work, again, involves people. It involves all people, diverse group of people, and you need to account for all of that and account for their perspectives and their viewpoints, not just a dominant viewpoint, and think about how that then has an impact on what eventually gets made and how it's going to impact people in the real world who are using this in a larger context. And then recognize the implications of your work for everyone, not just who you want your users to be, who you think your users are for yourself and your friends, but really for all these different viewpoints, including ones that you might not know about. It's our jobs as designers, as people in tech, to think about those sort of things. We're no longer just making kind of silly apps or games. We're making things that people need, that people are using in hospitals, that people are using um, in their everyday life that they need to live their lives. And so we really need to start thinking about how we can really possibly do some good and maybe even think about how we can further shrink inequalities, how we can actually be more inclusive and have that have some sort of larger impact. Because if we don't, we are gonna have an impact and it's not gonna be a good one. It's gonna be one that's going to further divide. So that's it, thank you.